Welcome back to This Week in Watches. I'm Tim, and this is Watchbox. I thank all of our friends joining us from far and wide for a fireside chat of the week that was in luxury watches. Of course, we've got this or that, new watches, and the best article of the week coming up right now. Don't forget, the fun continues on the Watchbox.com after the broadcast. New watches posted daily, even through the weekend. We have everything from my original watch reviews to world-class studio photography of the pieces, and if you have the Watchbox app, you can use our new AR feature to see our watches on your wrist before you decide. All right, let's talk quickly about the watch that's on my wrist right now. Wrist shots are fun, especially when you get two in one. This is my Jaeger LeCoult Reverso Platinum Number no. Two. It's a white gold ruthenium coated silver painted dial on the one side with coaxial power reserve underneath the hands. On the opposite side, well, like I say, two in one. Tourbillon with a white gold Sunray Cote de Genève pattern, black polished bridge, blued screws, and delightfully, you can see all of the text on the movement is actually engraved and then inked. I love this little piece. It's a gentle giant and a mighty mite. Only 42 millimeters lug to lug and 26 wide, proof that you do not need size to impress. This is a watch that I wear by myself because it provides that kind of satisfaction. Okay, guys, tonight I want to Thank everyone who's joining us in. Edward Ledden from Sweden, you were the first in the box. And speaking of our friends in the box, I can see David Hefkin, Martin, Robin Rickett, Fjord Prefect, Eddie Landsberg, Ivalo Petrov, Matt Foster, and Aeolus 1982 joining us from Germany. All right, guys, I'm going to post our link to the new poll, this or that, for the evening. You guys can start voting. Let me give you a sense of what you're voting for. This or that, viewer decision beyond Swiss borders. I'm giving you two affordable options that you can purchase for under five thousand US dollars. You're going to vote in the poll, in the chat box, or the description below, depending on how you're watching, and tell me which one you want. Okay. We're going with the Grand Seiko Spring Drive SBGA 203 versus the Basel World 2018 debut Nomos Autobahn with Knocked Blau Dial. That is the night blue dial. Okay, so the Nomos Autobahn night blue. This was a 41 millimeter stainless steel launch that goes a long way towards diffusing accusations of sterility in Nomos watch design. 41 millimeters, stainless steel, fairly slim, and unusually for Nomos, this one is sold on a textile strap rather than a horse leather shell cordovan. You can see it has a gorgeous concave dial that helps to blunt criticism of Nomos design austerity. You can see it's both grained and beautifully blue. It also has blinding loom that burns away any doubt about the character and content of Nomos dials. This one lights up like an automotive dashboard at night, and that's kind of the idea. With a name like Autobahn, automotive associations are par for the course and beautifully executed. Now, three versions of this watch are offered. The three versions, as you can see, silver on blue, you can see silver on silver, and then you can see uh, blue on silver. This is a three watch family, but the one in the middle is our watch for the evening. 42-hour automatic caliber DUW6101 with a bi-directional quick set and hacking seconds. The DUW6101 is a Nomos in-house caliber, as you can see, with a full balance bridge for toughness, automatic winding for convenience, 100-meter water resistance thanks to a screw-down crown. This is an all-aspect sports watch. You can also see they give you real blued screws, kiln-fired, heat-oxidized, and the DUW, standing for Deutsche Ehrenwerk, means that it is an all-Nomos movement with their own hairspring balance and swing system escapement. Finally, the price is right at $4,800 US for all three versions. So you're getting a lot of watch for your money. You can buy from a Nomos AD or direct from Nomos on their website. Now it's up against a watch that is probably unique in this price point, certainly unique mechanically, and that is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive SBGA203. Very close in size to the Nomos, you can see 41 millimeters in stainless steel. This one's a little bit different because you get a bracelet included for the price, and we'll get to that price in a moment. But Spring Drive sets this watch apart. 72 hour power reserve, automatic winding, 100 meter water resistance. You can see there is a power reserve indicator on the dial side. Now, critically, this watch, though robustly water resistant, is not luminescent. So that's an advantage that the Nomos has up on this one. It does have a gorgeous and beautifully 
monotone black date disc with a white on black print for legibility. The shaved indices and faceted hands on this watch are exquisite and arguably punch above its price and above its weight. The dial feels distinctly Rolex in its fit, finish, and detailing. Now the watch is powered by a caliber 9R65 spring drive, which means Automatic winding, watchmaker assembled, watchmaker regulated, but here's the rub. It combines mechanical architecture, serviceable for life, with spring energy and a quartz oscillator. How's that possible if it only has a spring and no batteries? Well, the spring turns the regulator wheel, which you see in the lower left-hand corner of that screen. It moves in only one direction with no steps. One direction, no steps, a smooth sweeping hand, unlike a Swiss lever escapement. What happens here is you get the quartz precision, plus or minus 15 seconds per month, and you get the soul of a mechanical watch being conventionally assembled and watchmaker serviceable. It's the best of both worlds. Finally, again, 100 meter water resistance. You can basically never take this watch off. On a bracelet, 4,900 US dollars. Guys, let's throw up our initial results in the poll. Which one are you guys going to choose? I don't want to color your decision at all, but it looks like the Grand Seiko is pulling ahead and by a substantial margin. All right, there's no doubt that the Grand Seiko technically is more sophisticated. Spring drive took from roughly 1977 to 1999 to bring to market. We didn't actually see an automatic version until 2005, so this was an epic undertaking, certainly more than redesigning a conventional Nomos case and movement package. All that said, I have to admit that personally, the Nachtblau dial with the concave profile, the, the race bowl look of the Nomos actually speaks to me a bit more than the mechanical virtuosity of the Grand Seiko. So while I love a black dial and a white metal case, for me, the combination of the strap, the Nachtblau, that explosive loomed dial, the texturing and the beautiful blue granular surfacing of this Autobahn makes this my choice. And with the $100 I save, I could even buy an accessory strap because as much as I like the textile, no Nomos has ever begged for a classic 50s race car driver leather with a contrasting stitch than this thing right here. Okay, we're going to keep coming back to this as we continue through the episode tonight. I can tell my crew's got the sniffles behind the camera, so if you hear that off camera, trust me, I don't have an audience. I've got a, <laughs> I've got a studio audience of one, and we're pulling for them here. Send your well wishes to Harrison in the live chat box. Okay, so now I can see your, your responses are pretty colorful. Edward Ledden from Sweden saying, I like the Nomos more. Captain Zed, a U.S. national, saying, I'll take the Nomos anytime over Seiko. David Hefkin saying, I wouldn't buy either. And Weberfan1234 saying dial. Megatron, Nomos is garbage, let's be honest, or at least very critical. And then I can see Herman Ingram is saying Grand Seiko all day long. He's not a fan of the Nomos. Mark Lisenby joining us evening. Mark, vote in our poll. All right, I'm going to keep coming back to this, keep commenting throughout the episode. Herman Ingram, Tim has horrible taste. Do you think? Okay, moving along. Remember, Asia Pacific viewers, we have a Hong Kong office, so if you are 12 hours and halfway around the world removed from me, I've got good news. You can still visit the watch box and buy from my friends, Josh and Zoe, as well as our entire cast of characters out in the watch mecca of Hong Kong. Come for the watches, stay for the company, look up Watchbox Hong Kong. And finally, stay with me as Tim underscore Maso on Instagram when this broadcast ends. Finally, wrist shots. Okay. Let's get right into this because I asked for your wrist on my pixels and let's go. Quinton T shares his rakish 50 fathoms bathyscaphe from Blancpain caliber 1315 automatic 300 meters stainless steel and a five day power reserve. Quinton, you chose perfectly. That is a great watch for any occasion, whether a business suit is here or a bathing suit. Rolf V from South Africa, a longtime viewer, takes his Squally 50 Atmos for a hike in Cape Town's Newlands Forest. So. For surf or turf, Squally 50. And R. Nash will rely on Rolex service to resurrect his Milgoss after a tough knock. Now, of course, the Submariner V is the Hulk. In this case, not Hulk smash, Milgoss smash. But don't worry, Rolex will put that right back together for you. Bob B. gets us back on track with his splendid Speedmaster moon phase and a wonderful filter applied. That's the most colorful wrist shot I have received yet, and easily the most interpretive. Send me your stylized wrist shots to tim at thewatchbox.com to see your wrist on my screen. All right, comment and subscribe. I would dearly appreciate it. Finally, 
questions from the field. I can see RP saying, uh, not sure about hands on the nomos. And I can see horology homies, Tim, the best Grand Seiko to collect from the current line. I, I would say right now the Peacock, the SBGJ 227, if you can still find one of the 700, that's an amazing watch for probably around sixty-five to seven thousand dollars retail that's a watch that you will never sell for less than you pay for it if you manage to find one new with a warranty and pay list for it uh, separately I, I think the most interesting watch from the Basel World 2018 lineup at least in terms of price aligning with content and look is going to be the SBGH limited SBGH 267 stainless steel limited edition of 1500 pieces this is part of the 9s anniversary series 20 years since the 1998 9s you get the lines of the original 9s and the latest version of the high beat 9s movement this watch with a gorgeous Dine sakosha commemorative dial that is almost like a tapestry of symbology lines curves and creases in a beautiful blue with with yellow accents on the dial that watch to me the 1500 SBGH 267, 1500 pieces, 2018 is the best to collect from the current lineup. That or the SBGJ 227 Peacock with the green dial. Both great, you won't be disappointed, and they cost around the same amount of money. All right, so now I see a question right here. Edward Ledden saying, Brad G, no one regrets the JLC Amvox line, saying that car dials are, Brad said, car dials are fine on cars, but not on watch dials. Now, I got to admit, I'm actually with Edward Ledden on the Amvox series. I own the Amvox 2, and if you're familiar with the Amvox watches, especially the 1 and the 2, you know that the co-branding, the Aston Martin wing logo, was very discreet. So the watches were designed to stand the test of time. Whether you want to enjoy the automotive aspects explicitly, in which case you turn them over and look at the case back, or just look at the dial and see the automotive aspects implicitly. Beautiful regardless of whether or not you get the reference. For me, the Amvox line is as good as it gets when you're doing auto co-branding on a watch. You have to be able to take the watch on its own terms. And the style of the Amvox was concept watch. The mechanics, a pusherless chronograph, was haute de gamme, and the price, which should have been Richard Mille with that kind of refinement, was actually quite reasonable with a MSRP around $15,000 back in 2006. Not cheap, but reasonable for the complication. Okay, and Weberfan123 saying, ah, the venerable Squally. That is a fact. I love all watches. You send me your wrist shot, as long as it's PG-13 or easier on the eye, I will put it up on my screen. Okay. So if you want it on the screen, PG-13. Finally, new watches. Okay, so new watches come out every week, and I really have to pick and choose. Because I had a friend in the studio today, and we were yucking it up till about, I guess, one hour before I went live, I'm going to give you the best three new watches of the week. First, from the company that democratized luxury, and arguably does it better than anyone, the Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot Alarm LE. This is a watch that fires on all cylinders. First of all, you know I love alarms. I think they're the ultimate complication for business, for leisure, for travel. Everyone could use a little bit of a reminder, especially if you're absent-minded like me and you have a photographic memory but you can't keep a schedule or maintain appointments. So this watch, the Pro Pilot Alarm, is a 44 millimeter stainless steel pointer date limited edition. Possibly the tops over all Oris Basel World releases. This one came out a little bit after the fair, and I think it's the best so far of 2018 from Oris. Now you get a lot for your money. A water resistance of 100 meters, an alarm, a pointer date, a robust 44 that wears a 42. I've worn this case in other models, with a full clasp on an alligator leather strap. You see, this is a pilot style watch, but instead of going cheap with calfskin, which would be historically correct and less costly, Oris includes an alligator leather strap, and the clasp is no default design. You can see it's a folding full clasp rather than the pin buckle you might expect for $5,000. US It even features a lift-off trigger, so you can't accidentally depress a trigger and open the clasp. You must lift that lever to open it. I love this watch, and I also have to say with the caliber Le Joux Pere 5800 doing business as the Oris caliber 910, it's tough as nails on the inside as well. So between the toughness of the automatic 45-hour power reserve pointer date and alarm movement and the water resistance of the case, which makes this one equally viable for seaplane pilots, I think 250 pieces 
5,000 US dollars is a winning equation. I expect all of these watches to sell off at list and find warm and welcoming homes. Okay, keep your questions coming. I'm always welcome. I always like to discard my talking points to welcome and admit yours. So, question from the knight in panther skin. Interest. Okay, so how about Oris's big crown complications? So now I'm not sure exactly what you're what you're saying there with big crown complications, but if you're talking about the caliber 110 family. I approve. The Caliber 114 version that came out this year, the GMT, is spectacular. You're getting a GMT, you're getting a date, you're getting a power reserve indicator, and you're getting a 10-day power reserve. The movement's even good looking. For around $5,000, and that watch is also around $5,000, you're doing just fine. That is a spectacular piece, and the entire Caliber 110 10-day power reserve family is priced right around that zone. You get a lot for your money with Oris, but I always felt that watch in particular, the 110 family and a big crown pilot, is the best half price answer to the IWC Big Pilots Watch 5009 yet offered. Okay, so I see right here, double mire or double meter, Tim Masso, watch box, hi from Switzerland. Double meter asks, what is your opinion on Angelus? Their price points are crazy in my opinion. Okay, so there is Citizen Group of Japan. They're a very large watchmaking group. They are global. They own several Swiss properties, one of which is the watch manufacturer Le Jeu Pere. They're best known for making movements, like, for example, the one in the Oris, and they make them for other companies. They also have their own brand of luxury watches into which their movements are placed under their own header, and, and that is the Arnold & Son brand. So Arnold & Son is Le Jeu Pere, which is owned by Citizen. But again, Le Jeu Pere, Arnold & Son, Swiss watches. Above that, think of Arnold & Son for practical purposes as like Grand Seiko, Angelus is like Crador to Grand Seiko. So Angelus is to Arnold and Son what Crador is to Grand Seiko. So Angelus is over the top. It's an old mid-century Swiss watch name. They were known for calendars. They were known for chronographs. Uh, they were a personal favorite of former Le Jeu Pere chief engineer and watchmaking director. Uh, Sebastian Chaumonté, so he helped to resurrect Angelus as an ultra high-end brand within Le Jeu Pere. I like what they're offering, but with a brand name that is quite literally resurrected from the grave, pulled from the history books with about half a century of discontinuity, these will never be anything but inherently beautiful objects. They will have no brand equity or name recognition, and their link to the original Angelus company is not just tenuous, it's literally zero. So the important thing to remember here is that the quality of the watches is great, but you will take a mighty hit if you buy something like the Angelus Torbion family, which are gorgeous, but again, they're not going to have the name recognition and retained value of the likes of an MBNF or an FP Journe. You're going semi-independent and you're going off the reservation beyond the pale with Angelus. Buy them if you can afford to hold forever, or you can buy them pre-owned and basically purchase at something like real, sustainable, secondary market prices. Okay, so Will S. saying the Luminor 8-day gets no love. That is not true. Not true at all. Because the Panerai Luminor PAM 911 is on my list tonight, right after our next new watch, which is the Morris Grossmann Atom Back Page. Now, Morris Grossmann is perhaps the best-kept secret in luxury horology. One of two German companies that I consider to be the absolute apex of independent watchmaking, at least outside of Switzerland, along with Lang & Hein. Moritz Grossmann was founded by a young woman named Christine Hutter in 2008, and she's the director, along with watchmaker and engineer Jens Schneiderman, who essentially create all of these watches in a small manufacturer that makes about 100 to 150 a year. Now, this is a 41 millimeter watch, 11 millimeters thick, manually wound, rose gold or platinum. What it's really trading on here is the standard of the finish and the open worked dial. If we go full screen here, you won't regret it. So the open worked dial pretty much showcases an inverted balance and escapement. Now you can see, let's stay with this image for a moment because the Balance cock itself is completely hand engraved. You can see all of the pivot stones are executed in a clear sapphire. The dial itself, such as it is, is actually a blue oxidized sterling silver. So you're already 
far beyond the norm. Now you can enjoy that huge balance, which as you can see is almost half the diameter of the dial. Without having to flip it over and look at the case back, you can also see the unique and practical way that Moritz Grossmann does the setting and hacking of a watch. There's a crown that you pull out to effectively hack the watch and put it in setting mode, and then it returns to its neutral position. You then set the watch, hacked with stop seconds, before pressing the button at four o'clock, which re-engages the watch. The reason for this is because they, re they reasoned that people tend to leave the stem out where it'll get damaged. So they have a spring-loaded stem that pulls itself back in flush to the case for setting. And they also reasoned that when people push a crown back in, it usually tends to move the hands a little bit. So if you've set your watch meticulously to the second with hacking, you then push the crown back in on a conventional watch and you move the hand one or two minutes. What was the point? By pushing the button at four o'clock, you re-engage the drive of the watch without budging the hands and without needing to move the crown. Very clever. Now the dial can also be had in charcoal as opposed to the blued sterling silver you see here. In-house caliber 107 is made in the Moritz Grossmann Glasuta manufacture and the in-house caliber 107 is deliberately inverted so you can enjoy all of the business end of the watch without taking it off your wrist. You can see 24 jewels, seven of which are screwed into gold chaton in the grand tradition of German watchmaking. It's a big slow beating balance at 18,000 vibration per hour, but if you look at that balance, you can see that too is made by Moritz Grossmann along with the hairspring, and you can see how the regulating screws are actually recessed from the rim of the balance to make it more aero aerodynamically efficient. Yes, they thought of everything. An aerodynamic balance on a big balance slow beat watch. Now there's a lot more to it. 42 hour power reserve, the unique setting system, a few highlights. Made of German silver, the combination of nickel, copper, and zinc, it has a gorgeous untreated golden sheen to it that grows more intense with time. You can see that they have chosen, a, if we can go back to full screen here, they are the only company I know of that is doing their screws in this beautiful burgundy oxidized coloration. They're not polished or blackened or blued. They are burgundy oxidized screws. You can, you can also see that not only have they engraved the balance cock, they've actually engraved the mounting plate below it so you get more freehand engraving for your money. And of course those clear sapphire pivots really make the composition. Now rose gold examples will be offered in unlimited quantities. The platinum model with the blue dial you saw will be produced in 18 pieces. We don't have pricing just yet but this company has a great reputation for offering something like Grail watches exclusively at very reasonable prices, even compared to their German competition. So that is the Moritz Grossmann Atom back page. Okay, right now, live questions coming in. I can see Matt Forster saying, Moritz Grossmann, you never see these pre-owned, but they sell direct on Chrono 24, which I think is, is progressive and a sign of a strong brand. The fact that you don't see them pre-owned means that people tend to buy them and hold them, and if they ever choose to sell, they typically know other Moritz Grossmann fans who are willing to buy the watches off of them. You don't see a whole lot of MB&F selling pre-owned either, and that's because when you have a strong collector base and a strong name, you generally don't have a huge secondary market, especially when you're only making 100 to 150 watches a year. Now, he says that they sell direct on Chrono 24, which is true, and I think is very progressive because the last frontiers for the watch industry are pre-owned and e-commerce, and just selling watches on your own website shows a lack of confidence in your own brand and incompetence with e-commerce. If you're an OEM selling on Chrono 24 or something like Neta Porter or Mr. Porter, you've already embraced the idea of getting on an e-commerce platform as opposed to just putting a shopping cart on your website. Trust me, being on Chrono is going to ensure more views and more buys. So this is a progressive company in a lot of ways and one of the few luxury watchmaking companies that is owned by a female entrepreneur. So different on almost every level. Okay. Now I see Horology Homies asking how many watches does Moritz Grossmann produce a year? Uh, between 100 and 150. Not many low volume, and they make every part of the watch. All right, so now I have a question from bum, 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 bum. Brand 700. Tim, best pilot's watch under 42 millimeters with loomed Arabic numerals at a reasonable price. That's a good question. With Arabic numerals, I would have to say, if you're willing to call it a pilot's watch, and I would say it's equally influenced by 
deck clocks and pilot's watches. There is a Glossuta Original 40 millimeter Senator Excellence with a black granular matte varnished dial and immensely loomed stylized Arabic numerals. For me, that is an epic watch. Silicon hairspring, 100 hour power reserve, German chronometer certificate and tested to 24 days by Geo with the certificate you can get online from them for the whole testing process and all results referring there to. That would be my pick. You're going to cheat a little, but I would pick the Senator Excellence with the black varnished loomed dial. It's not quite a pilot's watch, but it's not explicitly not a pilot's watch, and it certainly pulls off the aesthetic. So that would be my choice. Asterix. Okay, moving along, I can see we have lots of friends coming in recommending Sin. Good recommendation if you want something that's a hardcore tool watch. Okay, now the Panerai Luminor Marina PAM 911. Possibly the most interesting Panerai no one's talking about this year. Technically, this didn't come out in the week that was. This is the week in watches. This watch came out a little bit before, but no one's discussing it. It's the Panerai Luminor that represents 21-year Panerai CEO Angelo Bonatti's valedictory and retirement watch. Now, he's the only CEO Panerai has ever had since what became the Richemont Group purchased Panerai as Vendome in 1997. Now, this is the final Paneristi tribute model, too. Uh, the case back reads, last one for Paneristi. Now, there was the Paneristi PAM 195 of 2002, the PAM 360 of 2010, the 10th anniversary of Paneristi.com. There was the PAM 634, 15th anniversary of Paneristi.com in 2015. And, of course, there was the Paneristi Forever PAM 532 of 2013. This will be the last one under Bonatti, and I think it's the most appealing. It's a handsome watch, and the price is right for what you're getting. Now, what you're getting is a 44 millimeter stainless steel case, 300 meters water resistant. If we can make this full screen, guys, with an olive green military style sandwich dial, where I actually think the simulated patina loom works perfectly. Don't think of it as simulated patina. Just think of it as a beautiful color that is perfectly matched to the Ranger style strap and to the immensely gorgeous rose gold hands. This is as good as it gets aesthetically with Panerai, and it doesn't violate any of the cardinal rules of Paneristi design aesthetic. Luminor case, Betterini style case at that. 44 millimeters, three hands, no complications, no dates. This is a beautiful watch that does happen to have a high-end movement in it, but it's the look and the purity of this watch that will stand the test of time and endear it to the Paneristi purist. Now, you get caliber 5000, which is a manual winding Luminor 8-day with a 300-meter water resistance thanks to a proper screwed-in case back, not the snapbacks from recent history, and you get an impressive full accessory set. I mentioned that it does have a wonderful calfskin strap, but you also get proper sports rubber and a tool. This one uses the traditional Panerai screw-fixed bars, not the cheap spring bars that we saw, for instance, on the PAM 634 Paneristi 15th of 2015. This is the real deal. So whether you fit the aftermarket straps that people love in the Panerai community, or you go with the OEM included, you're getting a lot for your 6,600 US dollars. I feel this is a great value. This is going to be a collectible. You can only have one Angelo Bonatti retirement watch, and even Panerai, which has always found a way of issuing another special edition that looks just like the last, can only have its 75-year-old CEO retire once. So I do believe this watch will retain value and retain value with a vengeance. 500 pieces, 6,600 US dollars. I actually like this a lot. And as a guy who once upon a time back in his college days once had a soft spot in his heart for Panerai, Mr. Bonatti, that's the way to go out in style. Okay. Now, moving along, I can see, guys, you have Marco has a PAM 390 that gets no wrist time. Why? Why not? It, strap it on. Summer's coming. We're not almost there, but for the April showers that bring May flowers, throw on your PAM 309. Why not? Just put it on one of those rubber straps before you do. Okay. And I can see right here we have a question about a GMT without a date window. Do I know of any? Hmm. Well, if you want a GMT that does not have a date window, would you be open to a radial date display? So, hmm. 
Let me think about that, because I've got some good ideas, but I want to give you the right advice on this one. Okay, so best article of the week, pure product focus. Here's the thing. I always highlight the best article that I read in the watch journalist space each month, and I like to focus on good journalism that brings you closer to the industry, the people in the industry, or the products. And today, we're talking pure product. Okay, hands-on, Blancpain Villeray, Tourbillon Volant, Heure Sautant, Minute Retrograde. This is an article by Xavier Markle on monochromewatches.com that highlights a timepiece I call the best of Basel World 2018 in my summary episode. Now, here's the thing. I called this Basel World's coolest watch. And though it is a self-proclaimed award, it's hard to argue the point. Grand Faux enamel dial with Champlevé retrograde minute subdial and a jumping hour. You have a flying tourbillon mounted on a sapphire base plate, so it is completely transparent from both sides. You have a 144-hour power reserve. You have a guilloche cut movement. Uh, this article has epic photos, guys, truly epic photos that illustrate the timepiece in detail and truly bring to life everything I'm describing from the micrometric adjustment screws of the non-annular balance wheel. You can actually see them beautifully relieved against the sapphire in this image to the quality of the finishing of the individual parts. I don't understand why Swatch Group essentially abandoned Blancpain for Breguet at the top end of their collections because this watch shows that Blancpain is truly the hidden gem in the Swatch Labyrinth. Now, there's also a focus on both sides of this marvelous machine in this article by Xavier Markle, and he shows you just how detailed it is arguably more intricate and involved on its backside than on its dial. You can see the gorgeous Grand Dorge or uh, barley corn guilloche cut on this movement, plus if you look closely, you'll notice the diminishing spiral at the bottom, on the wheel at the bottom of the movement in the picture. That is a radial spiral fashion power reserve for the six day reserve to march of this manually wound timepiece. This is, this is quite literally as good as it gets. An absolutely spectacular watch, beautifully portrayed by a fantastic photographer and a lyrical writer. Xavier Markle, you wrote the best article in watches this week. Finally, comment and subscribe on this video. If you enjoyed what you saw here, by all means, comment below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. We broadcast almost every day during the week at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Uh, thanks for everyone who joined us tonight. I want to continue the discussion. I know there was a GMT question, GMT without a date. Offline, let's discuss this in depth. Contact me, tim at thewatchbox.com, and we'll continue the conversation. Until until then, comment, subscribe, follow me at Tim underscore Maso on Instagram, and have an awesome weekend. World of Watches, I salute you.